tropical forests are magical, with endless varieties of life, high species diversity and vast complexity of species interactions. Tropical forests are also mysterious, as there are still so many species and processes we do not fully understand. But those wonders are under threat by environmental changes, deforestation and degradation. To understand more about the future of tropical forests, we talked to Professor Bill Lawrence from the James Cook University in Cairns, Australia. Bill is a leading tropical ecologist and voice for conservation. His research focuses on the impacts of intensive land uses, such as habitat fragmentation, logging, hunting and wildfires on tropical forests and their biodiversity. He has conducted long-term research across the world's tropics. So, well, tropical forests are renowned for their outstanding biodiversity. Could you provide some numbers illustrating the stunning diversity these forests support? Yeah, you know, in terms of their biodiversity, tropical forests are almost off the charts. And it doesn't really matter what group you look at. You know, you could look at birds or bats or trees or vines or fungi or spiders, you know, beetles. It just doesn't matter. Uh, everywhere you look, you get these extraordinarily high numbers of species. Um, there's a few groups, you know, obviously things like penguins are not, you know, don't peak in diversity in rainforest. But besides that, a lot of things really do. I mean, it really are, is the bastion of biodiversity for the planet. Yeah. So a major aspect of your own research is focused on the conservation of tropical forest. What do you perceive as the primary threats to these tropical biodiversity today and perhaps also in the future? There's a number of things happening. Um, it depends a bit on where you are in the world. So, for instance, if you're in the Southeast Asia, Asia Pacific region, you'll get a lot of logging, a lot of hunting, um, a lot of forest clearing for oil palm and wood pulp and rubber trees, that type of thing. In Latin America, uh, there's a lot of clearing for cattle ranching and also soy farming, as, as well as oil palm starting to come in there and some other things. Lots of logging there, too. Africa, heaps of logging. We're seeing a big influx of Asian, particularly Chinese, uh, timber companies moving in uh, to places like the Congo Basin, and also there's an increase in forest clearing there, but there hasn't been the industrial agriculture in Africa as much as there has been in other places. So it depends a bit on where you look. And then, of course, these, we're talking there about land use change. The other th big thing that's happening is that there's over-exploitation of species in terms of hunting and other kinds of persecution. And then, of course, the big one, climate change. And I think there's a lot of concern about how will climate change interact with these other kinds of environmental threats? And will they end up turning into sort of a one, two, three punch of environmental damage to species and that might drive extinctions much more? Also along those lines of climate change, some forests, such as the Amazon, for example, have the capacity to influence their own climate cycles. So logging, destruction of this forest could potentially trigger numerous tipping points. What do you predict will occur to our global climate if we continue logging, destroying our tropical forests? Well, there, yes, there are two big areas of the world, tropical areas that we worry about a lot, the Amazon and the Congo Basin being large areas of tropical rainforest that are also, by virtue of being so big, they're inherently not close to the ocean. They're not like on an island or on a coastal area, big basin areas. And through their own hydrological dynamics, through the water vapor that's given off during evapotranspiration and photosynthesis, uh, those forests, of course, are generating clouds and rainfall and a lot of other things that help to maintain that tropical ameliorated climate. So a big question is what's going to happen if we, as we continue knocking down and clearing and fragmenting and degrading tropical rainforests? What's it going to be? And, and I think there's still a lot of uncertainty about this. I mean, you know, we're dealing with a planet, Earth, that's being changed in about 400 different ways, significant ways all at once, you know, some number like that. And so trying to predict how this single planet is going to uh, respond to all these environmental challenges and perturbations is really tough. But, you know, we're doing the best we can. And I think scientists are out there really working and trying to project what's going to happen in the future. And one of the key things that we really do worry about is this whole idea of tipping points, because the forests are giving a lot of the water vapor up into the atmosphere through their own evapotranspiration. And uh, as you have less forest, you get less moisture going up into the air and therefore things get drier. And that can interact, for instance, with drought. And then now you've got fragmented forests with lots of people in them and lots of roads and lots of fires being lit. And you add all that together 
And that's where you really get these kind of environmental multiple punches happening, I think, is that these, these threats can interact and reinforce one, each other. Mm -hmm. And all these taken together, do you think there will be tropical forests left in the future? And if yes, what may they look like if you compare them to the forests we have today? I do think we'll have forests. Um, they're going to be shrinking and shrinking into certain areas where, for various reasons, there's not a lot of pressures. You know, for instance, there's parts of the western Amazon that are probably going to be more intact. Uh, this south and eastern areas are being savaged right now by all kinds of land uses. And I think you'll see the same thing in some of the other parts of the world. But what we're going to see is that there's going to be a real, there is an ongoing major loss of forest cover in places like Borneo and Sumatra, and it's happening really fast now in New Guinea. Um, you know, lots of different places in the world. We're seeing these, these very rapid changes happening. So um, I think there's a good justification for thinking about tipping points. And uh, I think we probably need to do it more. Mm. So coming back to science, so what do you think are the most pressing research question we need to address in tropical conservation today and perhaps also in the future? Wow, there's so many relevant questions. I think one key thing is that there's a lot of discussion right now, and this is a little bit broader question than what you just asked, but in terms of how much land area, how much Eco, uh, habitat, environmental you know, space, do we need to sustain biodiversity? And one of the big comment, one of the big ideas now is around 30%, this 30-30 uh, idea. That is something we need to understand better. Just the simple biogeography of where things occur and how abundant are they and where do they not occur and where do we need to you know, put together this jigsaw of protected areas on our planet to try to maximize what we can do for biodiversity and to reduce the threats that are going to be coming and, and happening. So I think we will have some forest, but I think there'll be, in many cases, degraded forests, smaller areas of forest. Um, but that'll probably, you know, as things become rarer, they become more precious to people. And I think we're going to see these small tufts of forest, you know, being heavily guarded by local communities because they're saying, look, we've only got 2,000 hectares of forest out here. We've really got to protect that because there used to be 2 million hectares of forest, and that's the last. So we've got to save that last bit. Mm -hmm. So, and what would your advice be for early career researchers interested in tropical conservation? Do you have? Yeah, I really encourage people to engage in conservation activities and also to get involved with, for instance, conservation organizations and others that can help them, you know, uh, inform themselves, inform their knowledge. I also really encourage my students to do pop popular publications, so popular magazines, online venues. There's all kinds of places, you know, you can publish popular stuff. And it's taking your scientific findings and then I think making it accessible to a much bigger audience, a much broader and more diverse audience. So I, I love that. Not all my students naturally take to that, but I really do encourage them to do that. And they just include it as appendices in their in their PhD, their thesis, these, these popular articles. Um, yeah. So the other thing I guess I would say to a young researcher is this. So few people are actually really involved in conservation. You know what I mean? Like so few people, mo a lot of people talk about it over their morning coffee and complain about it, but they're not really involved in the whole process, the conservation process, the political process, all that stuff. And I've sort of become convinced that a person who's really committed and dedicated uh, can probably have the impact of maybe 10,000 people. You know, that if you are really motivated and really committed to something, and, and work hard and you're effective, I think you can have an enormous impact. And so I think that's a very optimistic thing for young researchers to say is that, wow, this is a way you could not only do something that you really enjoy, but also have a really positive impact on the planet. Mm -hmm. So, Billy, you've probably seen most of the tropical forest we have on our planet. Do you have a favorite forest? I love the Amazon. We were there. We've been working there quite a long time. I thought Madagascar was amazing, partly because of the wildlife. Um, we're also, you know, working in places like Borneo and Sumatra, New Guinea. There's all those places have amazing stuff. You know, Sumatra has the birds of paradise. I'm sorry, New Guinea has the birds of paradise. Sumatra and Borneo have, you know, all kinds of endemic things: orangutans, rhinos, elephants, tigers. I mean, it's just. These are amazing places, you know. So what's my favorite? Yeah, I'm, I think I'm showing I don't really have a favorite. Um, I, I, we've worked all over the place. We've tried to work in different places. And I think that that's been a, a real bonus is just to be able to see different forests and how they're different. Yeah, completely agree. Thank you so much, Bill. Pleasure.